Greetings, my brethren. It is so good to be with you yet another day whereby we can encourage one another as believers. And if you have not yet trusted Jesus Christ to be your Savior and join us in being a believer in Christ, today would be a wonderful day for you to do that. As believers, we have a responsibility. Jude reminded us of that in verse 23, where he said, And others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Wow. I want you to know that we are placed here on planet Earth as children of God to rescue the perishing. Fanny Crosby, oh, what a woman. She wrote the song entitled, Rescue the Perishing. In verse 1, she said, Rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. Snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. Weep o'er the erring ones. Lift up the fallen. Tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing. Care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Jesus will save. What a message. What a message to each and every one today, especially to those who have not yet placed their faith and trust in the Lord. Now, this matter of salvation is a serious matter. It is a matter that John preached about. Remember, John was that one that prepared the way. Uh, he was the forerunner of Christ. And um, John, in his first message, in Matthew chapter 3, the Bible says, And in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, or Isaiah saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. This message that John preached, I told you in our last devotion, that Jesus preached this message of repentance. I believe that every preacher should be preaching the message of repentance. You see, in order for one to repent, one must see him or herself as wrong and produce godly sorrow. It is one thing to say you're wrong and uh, just admit it and say, okay, I've been wrong. But it is something else to be wrong and to produce godly sorrow. When Paul wrote to the Corinthians in his second letter, in chapter 7 and verse number 10, he said something. For godly sorrow walketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world walketh death. You know, sometimes when one gets serious with God and sees him or herself in need of the Savior, and God gets hold of the heart, sometimes others look at them and mock them and make fun and say they are soft. But the Bible said, For godly sorrow walketh repentance to salvation. You know, when one sees him or herself as wrong, one who has sinned against God and is sorry and come to God and ask forgiveness, that bringeth salvation. Now, failure to repent will result in severe judgment. Now, some people figure, well, you know, I don't have to repent. I don't have to trust Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Well, Let's see what the scripture says about that. First of all, let's look at Matthew chapter 11 and read from verse 20 to verse 24. I'm going to share some scriptures with you to show you that failure to repent will result in sincere judgment. Verse 20 of chapter 11 of Matthew. Then began he to upbraid the city wherein most of his mighty works were done, but they repented not. 
Woe unto thee, Chorazin! Woe unto thee, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. And I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. You know that in Sodom, they lived so wickedly that God destroyed Sodom with fire. And he's saying to Caponium that greater works were done in their area than what was done in Sodom. So those of Caponium would have had more evidence. They would have had more to go on. They even said that if the things that were done in Caponium had been done in Sodom, the Sodomites would have repented and Sodom would have been around still. And then in chapter 12, verse 38 to 41, then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seek it after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. You understand that the Ninevites were wicked people. But when Jonah went down to Nineveh and he began to preach repentance, the people repented and God forgave them. Matter of fact, if you know this story well, you would know that Jonah did not even want to go to Nineveh. No, because he knew that God would forgive the people. He didn't want to go. But when God delivered him on the land out of the belly of the fish, he knew that he had to go. And when he preached, the people repented. Preaching is done today, but people are hardening their hearts. They have it for a joke, as if they have all the time in the world that there is no hell, and what the Bible says is not true. They have, they have heard it so often. Now they are accustomed to it. Bear in mind, repentance carries along with it obedience. Peter preached in his Pentecost sermon, repent and be baptized. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. One may say, But why do I need to be baptized? You said, I don't need to be baptized to be saved. Yes, but you are baptized because you are saved. Baptism doesn't save you. But baptism is an outward profession of something that happened inwardly. Baptism is letting the world know that I have accepted Jesus Christ to be my Lord and indwelling personal Savior. And I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. John also encouraged them to be baptized as a sign of repentance. The book of Acts, message after message, was that of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Testifying both to the Jews, Acts chapter 20, verse 21, and also to the Greek, repentance towards God, and faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Look again 
in Acts chapter 26 and verse number 18. He said to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. That was the message then, and it should be the message now. Nothing has changed in regards to God's message. If you and I will be saved, we must repent. Except a man repent, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That is the voluntary. Change your mind towards God and the things of God. See yourself in need of a Savior. Accept Him as Savior and Lord, and He will save you. Our Father, thank You for Your Word. Thank You for the message then, which is the message now. Help us to continue to preach and preach repentance. Have Your way with us. Get honor and glory in all that we do and all that we say. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Friends, please click that button. Share with a friend, with a loved one. And like I've said, you don't know, there may be someone just laying there on a bed. These words would encourage their hearts. There may be someone don't know how to trust Christ. These words may help them too. God bless you. Have a great day.